because I think uh, one thing what Rachel was saying, she, like, you know, the, these top agents that, that you talk to day in and day out, they understand the value of a lead, right? It doesn't matter if, if for example, that you've had a conversation with them and then they're, they're not interested to sell just at this minute, but they've obviously, they have shown some interest, otherwise they wouldn't have clicked and they wouldn't have submitted, submitted their details, right? So you can, the long-term value of that lead, you can add that to your database and nurture and follow up and just touch base with them every two months, just give them a call, you know? And, and that's the real value that agents don't understand. Some you know? don't. So my, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of agents don't understand that. that and some, it. it's fixing a problem that they don't even have the privilege of having because some are yeah. questioning if they'll even be here in six months time. They yeah. need something now. Yeah. So I understand the pain and yeah. also that, you know, there's the long-term game, which we know works and there's huge value in, but then there's also the short-term game players and make no mistake, the guys playing the long game are ready to jump on the thing that's happening now as yeah. much, if not more so than the person yeah. who's just looking for the short-term game. Yeah. But you've got to be aware of the possibility of both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So that's no, a good point. Okay, let's just pause very quickly and I'm going to grab that one. I'm like, mm. I'm like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want free training. Why? Do they think the training's an upsell or something? Probably. <laughs> I'm like, it's... Or maybe they've got training fatigue because this is the thing. There's so much information out there that sometimes it's like, yeah, I've heard all this stuff before. It's a waste of my time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, I was, I was kind of shocked. I thought, Oh, it's going to be fine. It's going to be easy. Super, super cool. They're going to be like, they're all going to be like, Oh my God, that's amazing. And it's like, Oh, okay. Um, maybe not, but um, there's a lot of people putting information, hmm. information, and there's plenty of free stuff out there. And to be fair, some of the free stuff is really good, but yeah. it's just, you, there's so much. Yeah, and the real key to, part, you, you got to exactly. narrow it down. You Big know, time. You, 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 it's the same with marketing. Like, there's so many um, gurus out there. That's why I don't like. That's why I'm. That's why I'm not building a personal brand. That's why I'm not doing any of that rubbish because I'm not going to be one of those gurus. You know, it's like every time I open my Facebook feed, I see a guru post screen of how oh, Cody, they made and what they I've done. Made, Cody, I made a terrible decision. I thought I was going to be the next guru. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, funny, eh? But it's it, it drives, and, and I'm I'm just like, oh my gosh! And you know then, what? This and, is and you know what uh, they do, and you know what they do. This is what they do. So they make five grand or ten grand or something. Oh my gosh! I'm a guru. I need to build a course on how to become a marketing guru. And then and then what they do? They forget about their marketing business and then just sell a course on how to become a marketing guru. And then, then that's how they make their money. And it's like, oh my gosh! And it happens. With 90 cents. So and you know what's really interesting? Exactly. And actually, um, my brother works in deep tech. So he's involved in the food innovation sector. Yep. And he, I've talked with him and shared ideas because he deals with expensive consultants, yep. like even outside my pay grade. Like these guys bill big. And I'm going, I don't even know who they are, right? And he's saying, yeah, a lot of them are very low profile in the mm -hmm. sense that you really have to know who to know to even get in touch with one of these guys. Unless you're talking about like McKinsey or whatever. It's like, these guys are very specific, very niche. And I'm going to name drop here because I know she won't mind. Wendy Alexander used to be a CEO of Buffalo Thompson. I mean, you're not going to see her in a social media feed. She's not out there promoting herself. Holy crap. Like if you were a real estate agency and you wanted some advice, yeah. some guidance, especially in that people part of the business, whether it be the culture or helping performance, like she is a guru. She's yeah. one of the greats. And yet, I mean, of course, I'm sure a lot of people would know who Wendy Alexander is, but she's not out there trying to be a guru. She just is. Yeah. See, and, and that's, and that's, um, that's kind of what I, that's the, that's what I like. I would much prefer that because I'm just like the marketing industry, you know, it's just, an, it's just appalling. Like it is so bad. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, this is interesting because you can imagine the moment you have a Facebook business page that mm -hmm. identifies yourself as either a coach or a consultant or a motivational speaker. So there's three <laughs> tags that I have associated to mine. Just imagine my um, 
sponsored newsfeed like the stuff that gets and, and it's all and 99 percent of these people are just like you look into them and you're like oh my god what are you doing to, like why you're ripping people off like number one like, i don't know how you how you can live with yourself doing that but hey and you know what i'm gonna go i mean i don't even know if this is being generous this is how i see it i don't think that the information that they're providing is poor but it's not exactly rocket science either. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, totally. And some people like to be told they want the reassurance. And in fact, truth be told, there's an element of what I do that is I've given away free stuff. I've talked at a conference. People come up to me and ask me questions afterwards. We then maybe there's a conversation. And guess what? I've already given the advice, but they just want to be sure that that advice is also specific for them. Yeah. And I think that that's actually very applicable for what we're doing today, which yeah. is, you know, how do we help agents get more out of leads? Yeah. And of course, for the people that have already signed on and have invested in your service in terms of please provide me some leads, yeah. then this will be hugely valuable for them because I'm not going to talk about the business of real estate and everything else. All we're going to look at is the piece which is critical for them increasing their return on investment in the short term at yeah. the first hurdle. We can go further. There's so much else, of course, to talk about, but the difference between this training and the other free training or any other kind of training that you could find is it's too general. I'm going to help you fix a specific problem. And we're not just going to talk theory. We're going to talk actual scripts and we're going to talk about the people that you are already working with and I'm working with who get the best results out of connections with people. Fantastic. Any questions? No, that's fantastic. Let's hit it. Where, let's hit it right where it is. So at the point of contact, and this is a really, really key thing. Whenever I'm diagnosing with someone, I need to know what's the background. How did you meet this person? Because it's really critical. Let me tell you a very brief story. A client of mine, we're discussing. Um, she wants surprise, surprise, more listing opportunities. She wants more people who want to sell their home to come to her, or to be able to go to them. Yep. And she's looking for the shortcut. And by the way, I admire the person who looks for the shortcut. I don't think that's laziness. I think that's smart. However, you make a mistake if you stop at the looking for the shortcut. You have to look and go, right, I have limited time, limited money. Where do I invest my time? Where do I invest my money? And do it smart. Be yeah. clever. Look for the best leverage. Brilliant, right? Yeah. But... So many people get stopped at the point of so many options, so many possibilities, what yep. to do. This guy says it works. This guy says it doesn't. I could do this thing. I could do that thing. Bus, shelter, billboard, Facebook, what a, LinkedIn. I don't know what to do. Pick up the phone. Door knock. Don't door knock. Don't call. Don't need a cold call anymore. Send a targeted letter. Do you know what? The reality is... All marketing works. Some is more effective and some is more suited to you and your marketplace. So the first thing that I want to bring to the table for you to consider and be very, very clear on is what do you want? 100. And, and I this think, and I think um, all marketing works, right? It depends where you are and uh, who the target audience is right? Because people are, people are looking in different places. However, I also think that it's a, it's a cost, it's a cost, um, it's a cost thing as well. As in like, okay. What's the return on your yeah. investment like, of? Exactly. Like newspaper. Okay. It's overpriced TV way overpriced, right? Radio overpriced social media is the most, I mean, the most underpriced attention that you can get right now for uh, what you receive. I mean, you can get video. And here's the critical thing. I, I, I think a real clear distinction needs to be made about return on investment. So I'm going to make a little footnote because Cody, I want to come back to it, which is that return on investment piece. All yeah. right. But very quickly, what do you want? And here's where you're going. And I want to just make it as simple as possible. What is reality? What's the truth? Yeah. In other words, how much does a TV ad cost and how effective is it going to be? And there's a lot of nuance to that. You just, I'm just following what you've already said, right? The other piece, if you're looking at human hours, like what's the truth? Where am I best? Where's my skill? Or by the way, where am I weak? 
that is mission critical and I can't outsource and therefore need to be good at and need to improve my skill. That's a little bit of why we're talking today because if you are the business person that is going to win the business, in other words, you're the person turning up yep. at that appointment, at a certain point, you're gonna have to sell the appointment. Even yep. if there's a couple of steps to this, let's say you get given a lead and you get someone else to call and set the appointment, you're still needing to be there turning up to win this thing and how many people have experienced, oh, sorry, it doesn't suit anymore and the appointment's gone or turn up and they're not even home. So it's part here of making sure that you're in there and it's not just, cool, I got a lead, I'm getting a listing or cool, I got a lead, I'm getting an appointment. There's a big piece in between. But this what is reality is different for each person because you're unique. And yeah. the context of, for example, where the lead came from, who that person is, is also relevant. So in the next piece here with what is reality is where there's more variable. And this is a really key thing to do. You need to stress test your assumptions. So that's where someone like myself or Cody or your manager or whoever it is that you can talk to who has your best interests at heart. So make sure their agenda aligns with your agenda and they're a believable person. Don't talk to someone who's not getting results. Don't talk to someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. Or talk to them, but take it with a huge pinch of salt. Yeah. So what's reality? Stress test your assumptions. And here's the kicker. And I think this is where a lot falls over. What to do about it? Yeah. Because you, firstly, knowing what you want is critical and why you want it. Knowing, being honest with yourself and being able to see clearly your environment and the context is critical. What to do about it is the difference between positive thinking and results. Because it's all very well and good to now go, yeah, great, I'm going to have a positive attitude. I'm going to do this thing and that thing. And yet you're so disorganized. You don't keep the time that you made to yourself to do the thing and you don't do it. Or you're slow getting back to the lead or whatever the other piece that may be a problem for you. And guess what? Didn't get the result. So it's very important that you're crystal clear about this. And the chances are, if you're a sole operator, you're wearing many hats. And this is where I'm coming back to the ROI. And what I mean by that is you're essentially a freelancer. Until you are delegating yourself, you're a freelancer at scale, but you're still a freelancer. I'm a freelancer. I'd love to be a true entrepreneur, but as long as my brand name is David Palfreyman and I am the trainer, coach, consultant, I'm a freelancer. I'm a glorified freelancer and I can charge a lot, but I'm still a freelancer. And here's the real danger. Guess who the best person is at a certain thing? Me. Oh. Guess who the cheapest person is? I'm free. Yeah. Right? Correct. You fall into this trap. Now here's the cycle. This is the real estate business model. I'm going to hit it very briefly for yep. you in terms of my philosophy, which is simple. It's like a momentum wheel. These are the key activities. You've got prospecting or lead generation. And by the way, this can be done by or done for. You provide a done for service. And yep. this is fantastic because essentially what happens is you get listing opportunities. But yep. by the way, and hear me clearly on this, prospecting is not alchemy. Alchemy is trying to turn lead into gold. There is every possibility that someone you meet during a prospecting activity or a call with a lead that is not selling their house yeah. today, tomorrow, next year. That's the way they are. And that's perfectly okay. The mistake is to try and convince them otherwise until yeah. you have understood their situation. Once you've understood their situation, then I believe if you have develop professional rapport, you do have an obligation to present a solution or advice, but you better diagnose bloody well. Otherwise you're barking up the wrong tree and you're trying to turn lead into gold. But hear me clearly, some lead will turn to gold over time just purely because it's no longer lead. And this is where people are different to metal <laughs> because yes, absolutely first tier consequence. This is what you're hoping for as a listing opportunity, but actually that's not what comes first. The first thing that happens is a connection. You have the ability when you have the contact details or you've met someone, you've made a connection. That's the first tier consequence. The second tier consequence is a listing opportunity. So be very clear. How good at, how good are you 
at building a connection with someone. That's a critical skill in this game. And be, be very conscious of the things that only you can do versus the things that other people can do because it's tempting to outsource this piece in here or potentially in this part here when it refers to coming back to these people because you're scared. It's uncertain. And the big kicker here is a broken feedback loop. This connection piece does not reliably pay off. In fact, I talked to a real estate agent the other day who only just recently, almost 20 years after he met this person, got the listing. Wow. Now that's a long lead time. Yeah. <laughs> right? But let's come into it. Of course, here's the kicker. And, and Cody, I'm sure you have these stories. In fact, you were telling me one just before. There are second tier consequences. You happen to get someone who's right there, ready to fire. Yeah. And it's your opportunity to miss if you're not good enough and yeah, bringing it to a close, right? Of course. So second tier consequence is, of course, a listing opportunity, which, yeah. by the way, we can go into further for another time. I'm going to sit and focus on this piece here, but I just want to bring the whole context home to roost, which is listing opportunities. Mm -hmm. Listing opportunities lead to marketing and sales opportunities because once you have a listing, then you can market it and yeah. you meet more people who also, by the way, some of them connections and listing opportunities. So yeah. this is becoming a bit of a flywheel here. A flywheel is a simple engineering device. You find it in the engine. All it does is it smooths out the torque. It means you don't have a vacuum in the engine when the pistons are compressing and the engine stalls. So if you have a problem with momentum in your business, you want to make sure you have this thing working in concert. By the way, marketing and sales, meeting people is not enough. You have to be able to negotiate. Here's where the money's made. Exactly. If you are fine at all this piece, but you can't win the listing or you don't do a great job marketing or you're not a great negotiator, then there's money being left on the table, either for you or for your clients. Yeah. And then of course you come up here and I'm just, actually, I'm just going to call it clients. Some people call this your nurture program, your database. Yeah. I don't care. It's your network. It's people who know you. They've either done business or would like to do business at some point, or they don't even know yet that they're going to. And this is the piece that comes in. Sometimes people come straight here. Sometimes they come from here. Sometimes they come from here. Sometimes they come from, you get the picture, but this thing then spins. If your problem in the business of getting this momentum well started, if it's not spinning, then your issue is here. Yeah. Make an investment, pay for some leads, or by the way, totally valid, make an investment. And remember, you're the cheapest person. If you can't afford to pay for the leads, guess what? You're it, your time. Yeah. Or seriously, make an investment. If you're planning to build I don't know what your, what your ambition is like, but if you're planning to build a six figure business and maybe your ambition is massive, you want to take this to seven figures. It is possible to do that. I'd like you to go and talk to a business broker and say, Hey, what's a $300,000 business worth? How much am I going to have to pay for that? Mm. And by the way, there's two types of businesses and you'll see them when you look at the books, some mm. are really, you're buying a job. You're not actually buying a business. And some yeah. of course you are buying a business but it's likely to be somewhere in the vicinity of maybe like a four to one multiple. That means you want to do 200 K you're going to have to spend $800,000 to buy that business. Yeah. So what is this worth to you? You may need to make an investment. Anyway, back to the crunch and Cody, I want to talk to you here, mate, because you've been yeah, doing awesome. some analysis with the people that are, getting the best results out of what you provide. And I think that's important because this piece here, as we zoom into it, is slightly different depending on the context. And here's where we come back to this, what you want, listing opportunities. Okay, great, what's the reality? I need more leads, I need more opportunities. Okay, great, let's go even closer to this. What to do about it? Well, if I invest in leads and I'm handed them on a plate, how come some people get better results than others? Are they just lucky no. no okay how do you know that well i mean it come it does uh, so okay so there's always that thing with uh marketers and real estate agents the marketers blame the real estate agents for not doing their job and actually uh, calling these leads and servicing them and following them following them up that's really where the letdown is that i've seen is the follow-up process right the the real estate agent will call that lead once 
okay, great. They didn't answer. I left a message. My job's done. It's a dud lead, right? And that's what I hear every single day. But what, what you've got to understand is... As Hang on a, one moment. And what do you hear? Because hmm. I'm... In fact, I already know, having talked with you, there are others who are saying, brilliant, just got a listing. Yeah. So what's the difference? The difference is the, the follow-up process and the method... Well, of, let's drill down into it. The method of contact. So... Um, so let's, if it's okay, and guys watching this, I want you to know my principle with anything that I do like this is you should get massive value out of this, regardless of whether you decide to work with Cody and his team, or yeah. regardless of whether you choose to work with me. I honestly, I just want, if, if you're investing your time in this, I want you to get something out of it. Okay. I'm going to talk about the context that's applicable for this particular service as an example you need to extrapolate the reality piece to whatever your method is. And of course, lean into this. If you're using the service, let's get really clear on it. Talk to me. How does the lead arrive? So let's with, be real nuts and bolts. Yeah, yeah, um, of course. So with us, the lead comes straight to your email, right? In real time, as soon as like, I just got a notification then that I just got a lead. You may have heard it, you may have not, but- I did. But so that is a lead notification. You get the uh, notification on your phone. Um, and with that, the real estate agent receives their name, email, phone number, and also their property address, which is pretty much the number one key, right? Because what we used yeah. to do is just deliver their name, email, phone number. And the feedback we heard um, consistently was we need their property address because that shows us that they're more committed and they're actually... Uh, uh, a warmer lead, you would say. It gives you something else as well, too. <clears throat> like, at this point, you now know enough information to be able to provide some really good value it, it, without it, it, needing it, anything else, without that person having to second guess themselves, have to go through the hassle. Now, I, I want to provide you the context. This is happening for people in downtime or glide time, and yeah. boom, yep, that'd be interesting. It's a click. Yep. Details are auto populated. Yep, send it on, done. Didn't cost a cent, it's done, which means easy to do, easy not to do, easy to do, easy to forget. Yep. And the relevancy curve, and what I mean by that is over time, this being time, this being relevancy, what happens is a dramatic drop off. I don't yep. know what the exact distribution is here, but I guarantee you call this person three days later versus calling them three minutes later or yeah. talking to them three minutes later, results are drastically different. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the stats are like 50, uh, I think it's like 60% of people uh, won't even answer the phone after 24 hours. So you, uh, after 24 hours, if you haven't contacted that lead, I mean, you, you just wasted your money. You just completely wasted your money. Right. Um, so a lot of the top agents will contact them straight away within, I mean, five, 10 minutes to, you know, maximum 30 minutes or even an hour if they're in a meeting or uh, a presentation, whatever it may be. And there are pieces to this that can be automated. There are pieces to this that can still be outsourced to another layer. If you've got someone that helps you with your administration, you've got a virtual assistant, exactly. or even if you want to use something like Zapier to connect yeah. your email through to your phone and send an automated text for something that has the filter words, it can be done. 100%. So don't complain. Don't complain and say, oh, that's not possible for me no. because you need to be very clear on what's the truth. Yes, yeah. reality. <laughs> By the way, notice the problem. So if you have a problem, and this is part of the process, you need to identify what your problems are. This is the benefit of coaching versus training is mm -hmm. I'll ask the hard questions and it doesn't have to be me, by the way, if you've got someone that you know who cares about you and is in alignment with wanting the same things for you as you want, and they are a believable person who is skilled at problem solving, go and talk to them yeah. say, I need help. And here's the key. So what's the reality problem? If your problem is time, then it's not a case of, Oh, well, I, I just can't be that fast or <laughs> I'm no good at email or whatever your, there's so um, many different ways to totally. service these things. I mean, even a simple text message. Hey, thank you so much. I just received your information. I just want to confirm with you that this is your address, 5 Banana Street, and this is the correct email that you submitted, right? Thank you. That is all you need to do. It takes, what, 30 seconds to send, to send that simple text? You can have it templated. Exactly. Exactly. Copy and paste, right? Um, 
and it can be even all automated. You can actually, there, there's services out there that you can actually have that templated and automatic, um, automatically set up. So when you And get by a, the way, this is the, the great news for you is you get to choose. If you're a geek and you like automation yeah. or you're that time poor that it's worthy the investment to get someone else to do it for you yeah. as well, then make the investment or don't make the investment. But come back to this piece because everything that you choose to do means you're not doing something else. Yeah, exactly. And this prospecting method actually saves you a lot of time, right? So I talk to agents, they're very traditional. They've done, they do door knocking, they do cold calling. I'm like, well, how would you like to save, let's say an hour or two hours a day, right? What would that mean for you if you saved, let's say seven hours a week? How, how much more time would that give you? You know, and, and that's a question that I ask because that's exactly what this prospecting method does. Now, it isn't, it, that, that isn't to say that, you know, that you only need to focus on this and invest all your money and, and, and time into this. No, you've got to do all your other, you've got to, you've got to diversify, right? But this is just the momentum wheel. It, it, exactly. You know there's so much more that you have to do or needs to be yeah, done. It, it, and what exactly. Cody's saying, this is not mutually exclusive. No. If you rely solely on this, you know what? You may be fine, yeah. but you will be having, you'll be working with a very leaky bucket because there's a lot of other missed opportunities for you that Definitely. as you have other things happen in the business, provide extra opportunities. Definitely. So text, brilliant, easy. What else are the best people, the ones who are getting lucky? What are they telling you, Cody? So, I mean, it's the exact same as um, I just said with the text, uh, that they'll call, they'll text, they'll email, um, all within the space of, you know, that five, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, right? So if, if they don't answer the phone, great, what do you do? You send that text, you, you send that template, send, it, send an email, right? Uh, and, and it's that continuous follow-up, right? So it's not just you call the lead once or twice or, or even three times and then, if they don't answer, well, it's a, it's a dud lead. No, you stay with it, right? Because yeah, and I'd like to prime example. So sorry to cut you off, but prime right. example, right? Um, I'm not sure if you're recording this bit, but there's an agent on the Sunshine Coast, right? He joined up on Monday, and he's and he's got one lead so far, right? And that one lead, he told me he called her three times. She didn't answer the phone, right? He called her consecutively three times. And on the fourth time, she actually answered. He said, it was a horrible line. I thought it was a complete waste of time. But he said this exact, exact script um, at, on, on the phone. And I mean, he'd be at the listing present. What did he say? While we're recording this, uh, this session. Yeah, he's in there now. What, yeah, what he, he he's in there right now. Um, and he basically called him up. Hi, it's Cody from... Uh, Cody's Real Estate, I noticed you submitted uh, your details on one of the ads I'm running. I just wanted to confirm this is your address and this is the correct email. I'd love to know if um, I can come out and actually view the property to give you an in-person appraisal. Anyway, long story short, she agreed and he'd be in, the, he'd be in there uh, right now. There it was go. so simple. Uh, and, and isn't that great? Like you don't have to be the most clever wordsmith. You don't have to have the perfect script. Sometimes just brute force in terms of follow up, follow up, follow up mm. is very effective. But also I want to make a quick distinction between two different methods of communication here. Synchronous and asynchronous. Mm -hmm. Sending a text message or an email or posting a letter yeah. is asynchronous. In other words, you do something and then it's... Whew, and the amount of time it takes to land, it depends on the method. The amount of time it takes to be read depends on the person. Yep. And the amount of time it takes to be responded to depends on multiple factors. The person, the messaging, yep. their situation, all the rest of it, right? Awesome. But I want to make the distinction that to successfully get in front of someone, if that's your game plan, that synchronous communication, and by the way, this is not just true for getting in front of them, but this is selling the appointment. Yeah. It's just the same as selling the listing. In other words, getting the listing, you need to be able to have a conversation. Of and course. it's a combination of open questions and closed questions. Yeah. Open questions to understand the situation, your knowledge married with their situation with the right 
closed questions to firstly confirm understanding, check for desire, and then get commitment brings this whole thing around to be able to progress through. Yeah. So we've got text, call, any other things that you've noticed? Yeah, so um, a question that's super important because obviously uh, th there's two types of ads that we run. Um, <clears throat> but whether you use us or someone else, uh, I'm sure you've, 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 the ag agents have heard it all before, right? But we found the most success within uh, a 24 hour and appraisal, 24 hour appraisal ad, right? That's the primary one that we run. We've got the perfect ad copy that we've I mean, created over the last couple of years. But the other ad that we run is a free property report, right? And that's even uh, simpler. However, you'll get, you'll probably get more leads. They may be uh, a little bit less qualified. However, you're going to start that conversation, right? And it's, and it's pretty much 90, 95% of them will reply and actually um, really be grateful for you um, giving them that report and an agent on the central coast, prime example, right? We're running through his um, Facebook page and uh, he actually gets back to him within five minutes, you know, and it's a, a simple messaging of message and message messaging them, sorry, on, on Facebook. Right. So he'll say, um, Hey David, I noticed you. So same script, right? Hey, Hey David, I noticed you submitted to, you wanted your free property report. I can have that to you just confirming this is your address and this is the email address. Now, another key factor that he adds is, is there any renovations or is there any work that you've done in the last several years that I should know about to give you a more accurate uh, report and valuation? And nine times out of 10, they reply, oh yeah, we've added this, we've added that, and we've spent an extra $100,000 renovating, you know, um, the back patio, whatever it may be, right? And you're starting that conversation. Oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, I bet it looks fantastic. Guys, this you know, is, you're leaning into what's the reality, applying the same context to them, because we both know that when it comes to providing a value of a home, there are so many variables, oh, including who they choose as the agent. Well, yeah, 100%. So, but if you want to work with what they believe, yeah. the average homeowner believes that the value of their house is mostly influenced by what they've done with it. Yeah. It's a yeah. great question. And um, after he asks that question, the, the, they'll always respond. Uh, he'll generate that report to them, send it off. 24 hours later, he'll send them a message. Uh, basically following up with them and uh, ask that that's when he'll go in for the ask and say, Hey, is it possible for me to actually come out and appraise the property in person? Right? Because if he, he knows if he can get in the door, he's got a very high. Um, and I want to press pause very quickly and talk about getting in the door. And, you know, he's done a couple of things here. Firstly, just by actually making good on the promise, because anybody who's asked for this is expecting yeah, you have and to. Deliver. This is this is the curve, right? So yeah. it's not just delivery; it's the speed of the delivery yeah. and quality comes into it. But honestly, in the moment, people equate speed with service. Quick equals good. Yeah. So better be quick than really thorough and beautiful, detailed. And, and here's the kicker: if yeah. you're providing a free report as part of your process then you can draw some distinctions between the free report. And this is a great thing. This is a tactical upsell um, technique, but guess what? You don't have to charge them a cent. You're literally going, you're giving them, you're making good on the promise. You're following up. You're sending them the value. They're appreciating it. You're asking a great question to learn more. And you're then also providing, Hey, by the way, yeah. if it would be helpful to you, I can do this sample report, the full report with all the bells and whistles, with the consultation to help you add oh, more value, to learn how to yeah. style your home, whatever the thing you're good at that you yeah. can provide that you know, and here's the kicker, it's a cold read, understanding what they want. Anyone who's been to a psychic and had an amazing experience, my guess, that person is great at the cold read and also very, very intuitive. Now, here's the secret, cold read. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to the average homeowner. We have to think about based off what we know about the reality of the person that's likely to respond and what they believe, there's probably a couple of things like they believe that 
the new paint, and they're probably right. The new paint and the good presentation and they put in some landscaping has improved the value of their home. So by asking that question, you're leaning into what they already believe and they go, yeah, this guy knows what he's up to. He's good, he knows us. So you have to be able to signal that you're competent and professional and you understand without just asking all the inane questions. And then you have to ask the clever questions. And by the way, when you know what they want and you know how to give it to them, and you offer it to them, they'll be asking, when can you come around? Yeah. Rather than going, hey, I'd love to pop around. That's so selfish. Yeah. Think about them. Why on earth would they want you to pop around? Yeah. Make the opportunity, then go in for it. Guys, I know I'm coming in thick and fast. It's rather <laughs> intense, um, but I do get passionate about this stuff, and I'd love to help you. Um, I'm sure Cody will as well. Uh, if you want more, please bounce back, throw the questions in. This free training, <laughs> uh, make good of it. It'll only happen for you when you decide what to do about it. If you want to know more, we'd love to help. Look forward to catching up with you soon. Uh, David Palfreyman, please look me up. Send me a message. You'll find me out there somewhere. Good on you.